gentlemen, may I please have your attention? Please have your tickets in hand before you board the plane. Thank you. Hello and welcome. I'm Johan Castell and you're watching Wings. On the show today, we go cafe hopping in South Mumbai on the hunt for the city's authentic Parsi food joints. Our journey also takes us to the unique celebrations from Albania to Las Vegas, where the 1950s style is still alive and kicking. Also on the show is how Venice has started ticketing day visitors to alleviate its mass tourism woes. Let's start. In our lead story this week, we go cafe hopping in South Mumbai, on the lookout for the city's authentic Parsi food places. Stay tuned to see what spots we find. In the 19th century, many Zoroastrians fled persecution in Iran and settled in Mumbai, India, where they became known as Parsis. This community is celebrated for its culinary skills, which blend Iranian, British, Portuguese, Goan and Gujarati influences to create unique and delightful dishes. Today, Mumbai's famous Parsi restaurants are renowned for their exceptional cuisine and preserving this rich cultural legacy. Our journey of exploring Mumbai's Parsi food eateries begins at Jimmy Boy, where I am meeting Mansi Agarwal, a photographer who lives in Mumbai and has offered to show me around. Enormous chandeliers hang from the double height ceiling and wrought iron railings outline this quintessential Parsi spot in a heritage building in Mumbai's Ford area. We can ask them also for their suggestions, like yeah, what, sure. what are they famous for and we can yeah, like... Because the veg that was mentioned on that. After a recommendation from the waitstaff, we ordered fish wrapped in banana leaf, fried chicken drumsticks and a vegetarian dunsuk meal as well. This place can be good for breakfast, or in our case, a late lunch. The food arrives quickly as the restaurant is not too crowded at this time of day. It is immediately clear that it will be difficult to fit another morsel after finishing this meal. Just look at the size of these drumsticks. Biggest, biggest drumstick I've ever seen. The food is delicious and very filling. We decide to pack up what we have left, as we have other places to visit. We leave Jimmy Boy for a walk in Mumbai's Ford. The entire neighborhood is full of gorgeous heritage buildings, and it's difficult not to stop everywhere to take pictures. See the faces? Yeah. And the hair are different in every, every of them. It doesn't take long before we reach Yazdani Bakery and Restaurant. Like many other Parsi eateries in Mumbai, this restaurant welcomes you with its charmingly weathered exterior. Right at the entry, we spot a sign for Mawa Cake that says, Love at First Bite. Enough said, we must try it. Before we can order, we are given a crispy cracker, all buttered up. Mmm! Olive and herbs. Butter. It's it's delicious. Mm. All right, it's not bad. Mm. It would go great with a cup of tea, though. <laughs> the rich aroma of freshly baked buns and cakes permeates the space here. And after buying Mawa cake, we try it out immediately. It's not cardamom flavor, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah right? It was a perfect little snack before we hit up the next place, actually. Yeah. Yeah. We're off to the next place. It is only a short time before the sun sets over Mumbai, and we are heading to Kolaba. 
In this old neighborhood in the southernmost part of Mumbai, dolls sell all kinds of trinkets, from watches to jewelry, to clothes of all shapes and sizes. But we have come here for a food joint called Churchill Cafe, located right on the main road running through the neighborhood. As soon as we walk in, we meet Polly Mystery, who owns the place and runs it with his wife. Polly immediately shows us unique Parsi treats, including Basanu, a homemade health mixture. Yes, you will not cut over here. Only between these three months only. It smells quite herbal. Yeah, it smells yeah, a little sweet yeah. also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it smells really nice. This cafe offers both Parsi and continental food. What sets it apart is the custom problem-solving sheet they hand out while you wait for your food. A crossword puzzle. We also find a book about Parsi recipes and culture here that tells us about the Parsi heritage. Mansi got a dish with baked broccoli and cheese while I ordered a slow-cooked Parsi mutton dish that is had with bread. Really juicy, so good. Polly joins us for dinner, sits and tells us many stories about the Parsis and his heritage. For dessert, he treats us to roasted vermicelli and nuts served with sweet curd. This dessert really hits the spot. I've mixed it all in. Nice. Before leaving, we meet Polly's wife, Molly, who also joins us. After finishing all this food here and meeting the owners, hearing their stories and experiencing their hospitality, it certainly feels like this was the highlight of all the places we visited. I certainly feel like I found a new favorite spot to return to next time I'm in town. Step into a time machine with us as we explore two unique celebrations of the 1950s era. From a party on a train in Albania to the Viva Las Vegas Rockabilly Festival in the United States. Our first story is from Albania, where the sixth edition of the annual Swing Marathon took place on April 27th. The event celebrates International Jazz Day with 12 hours of continuous live swing music organized by the Hemingway Fan Club, Albania. We're celebrating two important events, the Swing Marathon on May 30th as part of the International Jazz Day and the birthday on July 21st of the great writer Ernest Hemingway. We're all fans of his work. Named Andran Tren, the event offers a nostalgic train journey from Tirana to Shkodra, accompanied by live music and Lindy Hop dancers. Over 500 music enthusiasts will enjoy Albania's natural beauty while relishing the sounds of the 1940s and 50s. The organizer calls it the Lover's Train and people have flown in from all over Europe to participate in this party on the rail where the train service stopped operating 20 years ago. It's the craziest train. With these young people, the love, this music, it's fantastic. It's a beautiful party. A dream journey back in time to the 50s. A magical party with beautiful music, fantastic dresses. It's a real pleasure to see such beautiful people. Jazz fans dressed in 50s style rejoiced as they immersed themselves in music for four and a half hours on this old creaking train that departed from Albania's capital, Tirana.
from the Balkans, let's fly over the Atlantic Ocean to Las Vegas now. This is the Viva Las Vegas Rockabilly Festival. This party goes on for several days and includes music performances with dancers. There is even a tattoo room at the event where visitors can get inked up. It also featured a car show with countless classic cars on display in meticulous condition. This is the largest rockabilly event in the world and the longest running music festival in Las Vegas. Everyone who loves vintage cars gathered here at the event, which featured lots of live music and dancing from the era. And when we ask visitors at the event what brings them here, this is what they have to say. Coming to Viva is the best event ever once a year. You meet people from all over the world. Great fashion, great music, great drinks. But I'm out here at Viva Las Vegas number 27. It's amazing. The last time I came out here was last year, which was my first time. I turned 40 and I decided to do something I've never done before and Viva was it, man. I love rockabilly music and it just, just hit the spot. Bam, what's up? So this was my sixth Viva and my third time on the stage and we got the crowd. So the beautiful thing about Viva is that it's the one time of the year that I can be fully myself. I don't have to hold back. Um, and I love to be surrounded with all these beautiful people, like-minded people. It's my Viva family. This event usually attracts more than 20,000 attendees who come here for four days of non-stop music, hot rods, dancing, pool parties and 50s vibes. And if this is something that tickles your fancy, you should visit next year's event. Venice is one of Europe's top tourist destinations. Every year, 30 million people fly to the city for its aesthetic beauty and old world charm. But of late, this has become troublesome for the city's survival. How is Venice tackling the rising tide of tourism? Take a look. Venice is a quaint and beautiful city and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. According to reports, around 30 million travelers visit the city each year. A massive number that is threatening its survival. Venice has introduced an access fee for day trippers. Visitors need to purchase a 5 euro ticket, which rounds off to around $5, to enter the old town area between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. On average, around 40,000 tourists pour into the city's narrow streets daily, while the city's population is only 50,000. Even as the high visitor count boosts the local economy, it has had an overwhelming effect on the city's local community and its fragile ecosystems and historical sites. The tickets encourage day trippers to come during quieter periods and thin out the packed streets. There is more monitoring now than just the entry fee. Inspectors have been stationed in and around the city's main entrances, who can carry out surprise spot checks on key points and even on visitors. In case of any transgressions, they could get fines ranging from 50 to 300 euros. The number of tickets handed out is unlimited, and they will only be required on the busiest days, like weekends, from May to July. Time will tell if this experiment can tackle Venice's mass tourism woes. With the historic city under tourist regulations, what places can you visit to make the most of your trip? A famous art show might be a good idea.
Venice's 60th Biennale International Art Show, one of the world's leading international art exhibitions, recently opened its doors to the public. Interestingly, this year's event theme is Foreigners Everywhere and explores humankind's relationship with the fragile planet. From Greenland's ice caps to deforestation in the Amazon, the installations depict how climate change and wars have negatively impacted the Earth. The exhibition showcases artists from around 90 countries, including from Japan, Denmark, Brazil and the Czech Republic, with captivating concepts, designs and messages for the world. The art show, with thoughtful pieces and an immersive visitor experience, runs until November 24. It has only one urgent message for all. The time is now to become Earth conscious and protect the planet. Vast grasslands, a rich cultural heritage and picture-perfect postcard sites. Destinations across Africa are fast emerging as a popular tourist destination. In our next story, we tell you about some countries in the region you can visit for their unique culture. Have a look. Algeria. The country has captivating cultural sites. From Tim God's ancient majestic ruins to the sea-facing Oran city. There is also the more modern Great Mosque of Algeria and the list of highlights is long and diverse. But what about Algeria's culture? What kind of experiences can you have if you seek out a cultural festival deep in the desert of the country's south? Recently, a cultural fest took over the desert of Tibimu. Artists and tourists joined in Tibimu for the 16th National Ahelil Culture Festival. The event celebrates Ahelil, a poetic and musical genre, in a gripping atmosphere around 20 exceptional troops performed in front of an enthusiastic crowd. Ahelil is a UNESCO-recognized music genre from the region of Gorara. It forms a core part of the culture of many ancient Berber tribes here, like Zenets, Its musical performances are visually exciting. A Bengri or flute player, a central singer, and a chorus of other singers delighted the audience. Their pieces included devotional songs and even Sufi chants. The event also showcased various types of parades, from those having songs and dances to those with bedecked horses. The Ahlil tradition is dwindling because it is less frequently performed in modern times. But some passionate followers are keen on keeping its legacy intact. Men and women perform the Ahlil together, but most of the older, more experienced women are no longer around. Only the younger generation is left to preserve this heritage. We will also be teaching it to our young daughters because it is a world heritage and must be preserved so that it remains a legacy for the future. Next on the list is the scenic Moroccan city of Fez. Recently, it was the site of a Sufi musical extravaganza that brought together artists and music lovers. The 16th Fez Festival of Sufi culture and world spirituality truly fused beats worldwide. Oh. 
Sufism combines traditional observance with other forms of worship, such as ritual chanting. Along with traditional and classical European music, even the Sufi chanting practice was included in the event. The artist lineup was impressive with 14 talented performers from Mauritania, Senegal, and Tanzania. If you're planning to visit North Africa, try to time your visit for one of these cultural festivals to experience the region's mystique truly. That's a wrap on this week's episode of Wings, but we'll be back next weekend with more exciting travel and culture stories. Till then, this is me, Johan Castell, signing off as we leave you with visuals of the Alpine Light Show from Italy.